How do you measure sustainability? So I'm going to address that from a farmer's perspective. As Cameron rightly pointed out, I come from a farming family, fifth generation. Um, incredibly proud of my heritage um, with the farm and an incredibly proud of the industry. I mean, we produce, rear, grow food that, that feeds, feeds the world. It's, it's a fundamental basic of the, of the human population. Uh, when you look at Maslow's theory, you know, the, the two basics, you know, is food and shelter, and we provide one of them. Um, so massively proud to be involved in this industry. Um, I'm also proud to know some very innovative, um, dynamic farmers that are out there. In incredible. I've had the great opportunity to meet some of these guys. Unbelievable. If we can tap into some of that innovation, um, some of the challenges that we see on sustainability are going to be easily cracked. On the flip side of that, we also have a few people within the sector that don't really like to engage, don't want to see change, quite happy with the status quo. Um, so, and that's no different for many sectors. Um, but I suppose part of our challenge is, is how we engage with that whole um, agricultural sector. So, I work for a company called Benchmark Holdings. So, the company is split into three divisions. So, we have a technical publishing division, uh, which is called 5M. So, they have offices in Chicago, in the US, Beijing, in China, Moscow, in Russia. Maybe I shouldn't mention that, because Ms. Donald was here. Um, and... The most glamorous location is Sheffield in the UK. <laughs> and those of you who have been to Sheffield will understand what I mean. Um, so the, they have a portfolio of websites, probably about six million unique visitors every year, probably about a billion uh, pieces of information and data on the websites. Uh, they also do e-learning, um, so they do things from CPD courses all the way through to MSC. One of our other divisions is animal health. So again, operate in six countries. So undertake diagnostic work along with veterinary care and advice to the aquaculture sector. So work a lot in the salmon, uh, trout, tilapia, pangasius, um, and also in the shellfish uh, industry as well. Uh, another part of the animal health division is we've got a vaccine production plant down in Braintree in the UK. So um, these are producing um, vaccines for the livestock sector. And then the best division, because I work for this one, um, is sustainability science. So it's really a mixture of consultancy. Um, so we have a, an environmental consultancy, have a sustainability consultancy, but we've also got three farms. So we are, as a business, very embedded within the sector. Um, so one of the farms is based here. So we've got a farm here in Sao Paulo State, uh, about three and a half hours away, so the farm manager tells me. Um, so it's about 450 acres, uh, it's beef and poultry. Um, also undertake a few research uh, programs there as well. Um, our second farm, 2,000 acres in the UK. So half of that is owned by Oxford University. So we're just tenant farmers there. We don't own any of it but that's working in close collaboration with the university, so that's been really um, fruitful on you know, research projects. Um, and finally, we've got a small um, operation on the west coast of Scotland, which is a marine um, research unit. Um, so that's looking at some of the sustainability issues in, in agriculture, specifically the marine um, environment. Um, and I'm going to use the same joke because it worked well earlier. Um, they do research on things like lump sucker and uh, RAS. So 
good luck with translating that at the back there. Um, so the lump sucker and wrasse are really um, two species of animals that um, are, are, are a natural um, defense against um, sea lice. So you, you put them in with the salmon and they eat the sea lice from the, from the salmon. So it saves you using chemical treatments. So, sustainability. <clears throat> with my um, farming hat on, um, it's a bit of a scary word for me, that word there. Um, that S word that you lot keep talking about today and everybody's mentioned twice in every sentence that they've said. Um, <laughs> you come onto my farm and talk, talk, start talking about things like this, straight away I'm thinking, what does that mean for my business? More importantly, what's it going to cost me? You know, what am I going to have to change? You know, you're talking about stuff I've got no idea what you're talking about. And, and that tends to be some of the issues that we get, that we get so embedded with some of these discussions that we all know intimately what sustainability stands for. But I think sometimes we lose that communication back to farm level as to what does it mean. Um, it doesn't mean that we want to drive you out of business. It means we want to make you more profitable. It means we want to make you more sustainable. When we talk about sustainability in the UK and Europe and again with McDonald's, we talk about, again, triple bottom line, but we talk about three E's. So we talk about economics, ethics, and the environment. So when we talk about sustainability, as, again, as Cameron has alluded to today, it's, it's all of those things. You know, I think when, when we put it together and we see that, when we talk about that sweet spot in the middle, I would suggest it's, it's bigger than that. Because you know, if you look at that picture, it's a small target we're aiming for. You know, we need to open this up. You know, we need to understand that a lot of the things that we do touches all elements of this within my business. You know, as, a, as a farmer, you know, we've seen from the IPCC report that's come out, you know, the environmental impact now. You know, by the look of it, you know, they're saying that we can't use any, any fossil fuels by you know, the 21st, 22nd end of the 21st century. You know, there's some profound changes coming. Um, you know, we know sustainability from a farmer. You know, most of us will look at short-term sustainability issues. You know, what's coming at me in the next six to 12 months? You know, some of your businesses out there, you're talking 10, 15, 20 years down the line. But as a farmer, yeah, that's, you know, you're talking a different language to me. And I think, again, you know, we've had the conversation today. You know, sustainability means something different to all of us. Um, you know, and if my farming business isn't going well, you know, the biggest sustainability issue for me is that economics. You know, where's my next, you know, how am I p paying my next bill? Um, so these are some of the dynamics that we need to understand. You know, again, it's about communication. It's about the language that we use. It's about how we engage with the industry. So I had a complete disaster early on this slide. So I'm not going to try and repeat it again. <laughs> so, it's a clock. So, <laughs> my friend, Sarah Michael, who works for 5M, could you tell me, Sarah, what, what time, nothing not on that up there, what time is it now? <laughs> it's uh, 7 after 5. Okay. So, could I just have a show of hands in here? Who agrees with Sarah that the time now in this room in Sao Paulo is around about, give or take two or three minutes, because I've watched <laughs> might not be wrong, is around about seven minutes past five in the afternoon? Just a quick. Okay, so obviously there's other people working on completely different time zones in here, but that was a, a general consensus that we all agree that it's sort of that time. So time is a measurement. It's, it's a measurement. It's why we're all here, sat in this room at this specific point, and not at the bar, might add. Thank you, Cameron. Not at the bar. We're sat in this specific room at this moment having this conversation. It's a measurement. It's really useful. It's practical. It's easy. You know, we all understand it. You know, we all manage to get here, most of us. So... When I talk about agriculture and we talk about measures, and again, you know, when you talk about measures to a farmer and you add that, that S word, that sustainability word onto measures, 
that really freaks me out. I mean, now you're talking about sustainability measure. I, I didn't even know what you were talking about when you were talking about sustainability. Now you've just added another word in that I've got no idea what you're talking about. So again, it's about changing some of the language that we use. It's about understanding that from a farming perspective, you know, what we need to incorporate is some very basic measures. An outcome, and this is one of the... Um, um, elements from a, uh, the English dictionary is, is an end result. It's a consequence. So it's, I do something. So in my farming operation, I do something, and at the end, there's an outcome. So that's what we need to be measuring at farm level, is outcome measures. They're practical, useful, simple, provide robust information, creates an overview, you know, a picture of what's happening. And again, I was writing this um, at the kitchen table. I got the first three words up, practical, useful, and simple. My wife thought I was writing my biography. <laughs> so, um, so, but again, you know, these are words that we can, we can use and engage with the industry. So when I talk about outcome measures, this is what we're talking about. These are very simple measures and metrics. Mortality rate. You know, this is something, if I've got livestock, you've got dead stock. You know, it's, it's pretty well accepted. If, if you've got animals and you've got nothing dying, I want to know what you're doing. Um, but generally, you know, something's happening on farm. We're losing animals. You know, farms are losing animals. Farms are being lost on, during transport. So, you know, it's, it has implications across that whole supply chain. We know if I lose a cow or a calf, that's an economic impact on my business. I've lost you know, a monetary value there. I've also put resources into that animal that we're never going to get back. So there's an environmental impact as well. And there's an ethical impact. You know, the animal's died. You know, that's, that's pretty profound. You know, I mean, that's a fairly profound outcome of, of, of the ethical sort of um, point of view. So if we want to be a bit more specific, we could split it down a bit more so we could look at you know, under six months of age, so I could look at you know, calves, I can look at over six months of age, so I can look at things like young stock, adult cattle. And then, if I want to drill down further, I can look at all of those things. So the, fir the first two top lines are what we're talking about outcome measures. Those are the measures that we can, we can implement on farm if my herd mortality rate is 50% higher than my neighbours, do you think I'm a sustainable farmer? You know, do you think I'm making the, the best use of the resources I've got? Damn right I'm not. So I need to know. And that's what we're doing. So we're providing that. We're providing that framework. We're not dealing down here. These, these at the bottom, they're all management. They're practices. Rory touched on it today. This is not about providing a load of practices for, for farms to do. They are too diverse. You know, they're, they're, the systems within the beef sector are massive. We can't get into that. You know, we can't get into the practices as management. You know, we've got to rely on the sector that if we give them the measures to say, look, guys, they go, this is what you need to be measuring. If, like I said, We've got the innovative, dynamic guys. These are the guys that want to understand, how do I influence my management? How do I reduce deaths from born dead or respiratory problems? You know, that is a management issue, not something that we need to get engaged with. You know, Cameron said earlier, this isn't a dictatorship. You know, we're not telling people how to farm. You know, we're giving them the opportunity and the measures to be able to measure what I'm doing on farm. Again, simple useful, practical. Another one, and um, yeah, I'm glad we had the discussion earlier about antibiotics, so that's, um, but it's, it's not necessarily about, you know, statements that we can use. Antibiotic use is another great measure. You know, we can split it down a bit more. Prophylactic, metaphylaxis, therapeutic, subtherapeutic, so we can split it down a bit more. And then again, you know, from a management perspective, I can look, you know, wh why am I treating these animals? 
You know, if, if my antibiotic use is 200% higher than my neighbour, why the hell is that? What's going on in my business that's doing that? I need to look down. And these, again, are some of the simple metrics as an industry, as a body, that we can use. We don't have to get into statements that we're saying responsible use, because that really does mean anything. If we can say we've been measuring this, and over the last three years, the beef sector here has reduced antibiotic use by 15%, we know because we've measured it, it's a far better statement than saying it's responsible use. So these are some of the measures that we can pull through into communication. And again, you know, it's, it's simple communication that we can use. You know, we don't have to get into all the detail as to what we've done, all the practices, and we've done this, and we've implemented health plans, and we've done that, and we've done this, and we've changed the genetics, and we've changed the housing, and we've done this. You know, it's just a very simple message that we can communicate from the top. Water quality, so something slightly different. So again, you know, we can split it down, pH levels, suspended sediments, nutrient content. So again, splits down into, into practices on farm. And again, water quality wouldn't necessarily be an individual indicator for each farm. You know, we might look at a, a river or a catchment area or a stream or a creek that you know, several farms are, are feeding into. Um, and if the water quality is good, great guys, carry on with what you're doing. You know, you're obviously, whatever you're doing is working well because water quality is great. Thank you very much. Off we go. Profit and loss accounts. Um, again, and I'm sure plenty of you guys have heard, you know, from all of the farmers, you know, another, another five cents a kilo, another ten cents a kilo, everything will be all right. You know, you want us to be more sustainable, you need to pay for it. But again, you know, what the industry needs to do is they need to look at what their business is doing. Again, we can provide the, the measures and the metrics to do that, you know, for them to look at their business. We, we deal with quite a few farms across Europe. There's a lot of systems out there now, profit monitors, that go out onto farm, they'll benchmark it, and they'll tell these guys exactly where they are and what they're doing. That provides them with great information to start changing management on farm. Greenhouse gas emissions is another one. Um, so again, it's made up of several different elements, you know, fertilizer use, daily live weight gains, feed use, um, you know, killing out percentage. So there's a lot of information that goes into that to make up that one figure. Um, and again, you know, we know this is a profound challenge for the beef industry. And there's no good us hiding behind figures and saying, you know, it's the coal industry and it's uh, the fuel industry that's to blame. At some point, you know, and the focus is coming on the beef industry. We, we need to understand what our greenhouse gas emissions are and how we can reduce it. You know, it's this fairly simple metric there. You know, am I in the top percentile or am I doing something completely wrong? We know, and this is you know, work that we've done in the UK, we know farms with a low greenhouse gas footprint will be more sustainable, more efficient. They make more money. So yeah, there's a, there's a simple driver, simple metric there. And again, if we've got simple measures, and this is measures, we can use it against all of the different systems. So we can use it for feedlots, we can use it for prairies, and we can use it for farms in Europe. So again, simple, practical, useful measures that we can use across the whole industry. We're not having to develop a thousand and one different measures to try and measure sustainability. And again, you know, this has been said today. You know, we, we can't tell farmers how to farm. That's not our job. We can, we can provide the tools, we can provide the measures, you can give it to them, you can lead a horse to water but you can't make it drink. So this is what we're doing. This is about providing practical measures to the industry to say, there you go guys, go out and measure. Then what we need to do is we need to obviously then provide the tools um, and solutions to some of these, these issues. We're not telling them how to farm, we're giving them the toolkit. So, and this, this is some data taken from the poultry industry. So, and the poultry industry are very good at measuring outcome measures. So that you know, as the flocks come in, it'll all be measured, it'll all be fed to the back to the farms, they'll all be benchmarked, and you'll get a figure there. So there's your average running along the middle, and you've got your outliers, 
Um, so what it does, it provides me with information to say, if I'm one of those two farms in the red, I need to be doing something about it. What I need to do is go and speak to those two guys down the bottom in the green, because they're clearly doing something that I'm not. I need to understand what they're doing. So measurements. So again, this is something that uh, McDonald's UK have implemented. Um, so they've got a carbon calculator. It's called a what if tool. So you can go online. You put some fairly basic information in, and it tells you what your carbon footprint is. You then enter some, if you think you want to change things, I want to reduce fertilizer use, or I'm going to change my feed. You can put a different set of values in. And what, what it does is it tells you if you've got a, got a reduction in your carbon footprint. So it might say, great, you've reduced your carbon footprint by 10%. But it also says you've increased your profits by £15 a head. So th this is some of the stuff. These, these are some of the measures that you know, the industry is trying to implement you know, again, it's not telling them you know, that they, they need to do. It's just providing the measures to be able to have a look at your business and see where the areas are, are that I need to, need to change. Flagship Farms is a program, as Cameron said, that I'm involved with, with McDonald's Europe. We go out, we're looking for the top 5% of farms within the McDonald's supply base. We go out, we showcase them. These guys, again, are the most sustainable farms. And what are they? the most efficient farms as well. So this isn't, you know, this isn't witchcraft or magic. You know, sustainability generally equals pretty efficient farms. So just going back to my clock analogy, if we have simple, practical, useful measures. You know, we don't have to go out and develop 101 different measures. If we have a very easily identified identified set of simple measures that we can use, it allows us to all be in the same room at the same time, having the same conversation. <laughs>